a big hello to everyone you are welcome to the channel by seema makhijani and at the end of our today's class test the first order reaction a very quick summary this is the part of unit 4 chemical kinetics class 12th let's begin with the first order reaction now when we talk about a first order reaction it is a chemical reaction where your reactants are transforming into products and when this happens i would be writing as r going to p which refers to reactants going to products now in this reaction the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants that is you can write it as rate is directly proportional to the concentration of reactants to the power 1 it is this one which gives you the order to be first order reaction so when you want to write the rate law the rate law is written as k is sorry rate is equal to k r to the power 1 where 1 refers to the order and k is your rate constant fine now moving ahead when we talk about this square bracket this square bracket refers to concentration in molarity capital m or it is equal to moles per liter in case the reaction is gaseous then in that case you use pressures also in that case you may not use the square bracket is that fine now this rate constant is referred to as k which is the proportionality constant when you write this equation by removing the proportionality constant and in some places it is also known as the specific rate constant now when we move ahead let us talk about the rate of reaction first as done in the last lecture of zero order reaction the left hand side remains the same now the rate of the reaction is nothing but change in concentration of course of the reactants divided by time now if this is the rate of the reaction then i want to talk about the units of the rate of a reaction the units of the rate of the reaction can be moles per liter for the change of concentration and time inverse that is the general way to write the units you can also write it as moles liter inverse second inverse it could also be moles per liter per year inverse seconds year minute all are allowed the reason is all reactions do not go at same pace there are some reactions which are really fast and for them the change is observable per second there are some which are very slow for which you use years it is not essential for you to convert the years into seconds or minute into seconds it could also be per hour so please do not bother about changing the time units according to si units so if it is given in terms of year it is understandable that we are talking about a slow reaction when it is in terms of seconds it definitely must be a fast reaction is that fine now in case instead of concentration you have a gaseous reaction for a gaseous reaction your concentration changes to pressure now if you are using the pressure then in that case your units will definitely change under these circumstances the units of the rate would be written as bar time inverse which could be second inverse or it could also be in atm the pressure unit year inverse time as i said can be year second minute anything but what you need to understand is for a gaseous reaction the concentration will change into pressures is that fine moving on to the concentrations and the rate of the reaction and where you can get the value of rate constant so your rate constant for a first order reaction would be equal to rate divided by the concentration of reactant to the power 1 now if i need this and i want the units of k your rate constant then in that case how do i get that the units of k would be dependent on the units of the rate of the reaction as done earlier which is nothing but concentration time inverse 
because rate is change in concentration upon time whereas denominator has a rate co concentration so you need concentration term here which also means in this expression your units of concentration will get cancelled so you are left with nothing but time inverse hence the units of k for a first order reaction can be second inverse r inverse minute inverse year inverse depending on whether the reaction is a slow reaction or a fast reaction i'll be now talking about the graphical representations of the first order reaction as you very well know the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of reactants hence the graphical representation would be like this with the from the origin because there is no intercept in the equation as the rate is directly proportional to the concentration while when we talk about the rate constant as just did the rate constant does not depend on concentration hence if you are plotting the rate constant with respect to concentration of the reactant the graph is independent and you will get a parallel line to the y axis showing that k value is not dependent on the concentration of the reactants for a first order reaction fine you definitely should know at least some examples for a first order reaction so for a first order reaction the first thing that you should clearly understand is that all radioactive decays now these decays of radioactive could be artificial or could be natural irrespective of whichever type are there all by the way radioactivity is the uh, cleavage of the nucleus and why does this happen because the nucleus is unstable now since the nucleus is unstable it undergoes cleavage and all radioactive decays are first order reactions fine the second example that you should know is that of hydration of ethene this is the ethene gas and if you have sorry hydrogenation of ethene if you add hydrogen to it this will lead to what if you remember this is your ethene unsaturated compound and if you are adding hydrogen to it the pi bond breaks and you end up in c single bond c and the hydrogen gets added up so you transform your ethene into ethene a saturated hydrocarbon this is hydrogenation of ethene is the reaction which follows first order kinetics in this case the rate of the reaction is equal to k multiplied by the concentration of ethene to the power 1 which means hydrogen is not involved in the speed of the reaction that is why the rate of the reaction is dependent only on ethene i hope you are getting the grasp of the topic moving on to the integrated rate law for a first order reaction the rate law for the first order reaction is this now if you want to take up a integrated rate law you first require the differential rate law so the differential rate law is minus dr by dt would be written for the rate of the reaction where it involves change in concentration of the reactant divided by time we deliberately put a negative so as to overrule the negative that you get in the change of concentration of reactant as you move forward in the reaction agar reaction aage jayega to concentration of reactant to kam hogi na to final minus initial will always be negative so to combat that we deliberately put a negative sign whenever we monitor the rate of reaction in terms of the reactants is equal to k r to the power 1 i'll rearrange this expression i hope it is understandable now now you need to integrate both the sides on integrating both the sides you very well know should know that uh, your dx by x integration is equal to ln x that is log natural log to the x so integrating both the sides i end up in ln r is equal to 
minus kt plus i where i is the integration constant for which we need to derive the value of i. To get the value of i what we would say is when time is equal to 0 the concentration of reactant is equal to R0 which is nothing but your initial concentration with which you started off which you would always know. Hence substituting these two terms here what do I get? I would get ln R0 is equal to minus k into 0 plus i. So, this term becomes 0 hence your i becomes equal to ln R0. Is that okay? Substituting this value in equation number 1, what do I get? ln R is equal to minus kt plus ln R0. Is that fine? So, this becomes your expression and if you want to plot a graph for a first order reaction using this expression what you can do is the graph would have lnr this is your y is equal to mx plus c. Now, so your y axis here is your lnr and your x axis is time as you can see the slope is negative. So, your line would be like this and if you extrapolate it this point refers to your ln r0 fine. The slope of this particular graph would be equal to minus k is that fine. Let us rearrange this above expression from this expression I would get kt is equal to ln r0 minus ln r. Now, this is log so I can write it as kt is equal to ln r0 upon r. Since you very well know r0 would always be greater than r because reaction jab aage jayega, the concentration of reactant would decrease with time. So, initial concentration would always be higher therefore, since this value is greater so your r0 by r would always be greater than 1. If it is greater than 1 then your this value would always be a positive value fine. This particular expression is of no use to us because in this particular expression you will require ln, but ln we cannot use for any calculations. So, we need to convert your natural log into log to the base 10. How do we do that? By multiplying it by a factor of 2.303 your ln changes to log r0 by r. So, this is the important formula that you would be requiring for all numericals of first order reaction fine. Now, in this expression you can also write it as log of R naught by R is equal to what do I get k t upon 2.303. Now, if you are asked to plot a graph of this particular expression. Now, this particular expression is y is equal to mx. So, if I want to plot a graph for this particular expression, the graph would be of the type where on the y axis you would have log of r0 by r, this is r, please ignore this. And on the y axis you would have time. As you can see there is no intercept, this would be from the origin and the slope in this case is a positive value, the slope will be your k upon 2.303. That is also a way to plot a graph for first order reaction. From this particular expression as I said this will be requiring in the numericals, we would now be doing the expression for t half. What does t half refer to? The half life period that is the time taken for the reaction to be 50 percent complete. From this expression you can calculate time from the formula t is equal to 2.303 by k log of r0 by r. This is the formula that you can use for calculating all time periods. So, your t half in this case would be equal to what? 2.303 by k now log of. If the initial concentration is r0 
what is the concentration of R when it is 50% complete? When it is 50% complete, this value definitely is going to be R0 divided by 2. Half of it is left. So, your expression becomes 2.303 by K log 2, which becomes ultimately 2.303 into multiply it by the value of log 2. What is the value? 0 0.3010. You can verify from the log tables divide by 2 and your final expression therefore comes out to be if you substitute and multiply the values you get 0.693 by k. This is another expression for a first order reaction which is also used for numericals. Fine. Now if you are asked to plot a graph between t half and concentration for a first order reaction where you very well know that t half is equal to 0 0.693 by k there is no concentration involved therefore the graph is independent of concentration and it would be like this for a first order reaction. Moving on to a few more values or derivations. If you are asked to find out T3 by 4 or T75 percent for a first order reaction, then in that case the formula again is T3 by 4 would be equal to 2.303 by K log of R0 is the initial concentration. Please mind you this R value that you write is the concentration of the reactant after reaction is 75% complete which means this value would be equal to R0 by 4. This is the common place of error where students reported to be 3 by 4 R0. This value is always the concentration after the reaction is complete which means whatever you are left with. Hence your expression for T3 by 4 would be 2.303 by K log of R0 upon R0 by 4 which would come out to be 2.303 by K log of 4. You can easily substitute the value for log of 4 and get the answer for your information log 4 can easily be understood as log of 2 to the power 2 which can be written as 2 log 2 which can be written as 2 into 0 0.3010 because log 2 is this. So, your answer would be 2.303 into 2 into 0 0.3010 divided by 2 divided by k. So, that is the expression for your T 3 by 4. Moving on to T 2 by 3. Now, in this case, it means that the reaction is 2 by 3 complete. So, how much are you left with? 1 by 3. So, your expression would be 2.303 by k log of R0 divided by how much? How much are you left with after 2 by 3 is complete? 1 by 3. So, this value would be R0 by 3. So, your expression becomes 2.303 by k log of R0, R0 gets cancelled 3. So, your answer would be T2 by 3 is equal to 2.303 by K log 3 is 0 0.4771. You can multiply and get the value for T2 by 3. As you can see, T2 by 3 is also not dependent on concentration. Moving to the last expression, which is equal to T100 percent, which means time taken for a first order reaction to be 100 percent complete. Now, if the reaction is 100% complete, the numerator is R0, what will be the denominator? The value for denominator would be equal to 0 because the reaction is complete. Hence, your T 100% can be written as 2.303 by K log of infinity because anything divided by 0 is infinity. So, your expression would have a log infinity. Log infinity value is not defined. If this is not defined, you can never find T 100 percent. So, the conclusion drawn is 
that you can never find out this value. This is not or it cannot be found because log infinity is not defined. So, a first order reaction never reaches completion. You cannot find the time that it takes for it to be 100% complete. This is one area where children struggle. Let us take you have a reaction where t half is equal to 2 minutes. I am trying to explain what do we mean by this statement. You started with 100 grams of reactants. After 2 minutes you are left with half of it 50 grams. After another 2 minutes you are left with half of this 25 grams. After another 2 minutes you are left with half of this 12.5 grams. After another 2 minutes you are left with half of this that is 6.25 grams and it would continue. And the conclusion is that you will never be found able to find the time taken for the reaction to be finished. Whatever minutely left there would always be the amount of reactant left even after many cycles of T half. With this I conclude my class on the first order reaction. Hope you liked it and can be summarizing it. Please share, like and subscribe the channel. Share it in the groups wherever you find it could be of use to other class 12 students. Bless you loads. Do well in life. Keep in touch. Bye.